Now, as a Christian, you're, you're meant to have a portion in Christ. As a Christian, you're meant to have a reward in Christ. But to my greatest amazement, as I began to study, I began to understand that that not everybody will have a portion in Jesus Christ. And uh, it, it was, I mean, it inconvenienced me when I came to understand that mystery. It inconvenienced me greatly. And that is why I want to share it with you. Like I said, as a Christian, you are expected to have a portion of the kingdom of God as your reward. You know, you're meant to have a reward. Jesus said, said that in my father's house are many mansions, if it were uh, not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. That is your portion. But there is also the physical portion on earth, your prosperity, your, your healing, and all the portions, and your benefits on earth. One question I want to ask is, do you really have a portion in Christ and in the kingdom of God? It's a question I want to ask you as you, 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 you are listening you might be a churchgoer. You know, please, I want to beg you, never be deceived in the, by the fact that you're a churchgoer. Look, don't even be deceived by the fact that you're a pastor. Don't be deceived by the fact that you're a worker in the church. Don't be deceived by these things. Only know that there are certain things that must be done for you to be sure of your portion. The most disheartening thing is for you to think you have a portion in Christ while you really do not have a portion. There are lots of people who believe that when they die today, they will go to heaven, but before God, their names are not written in the book of life. Now, they are so convinced because they attend the church, they are members of a church, they work in the church, they do one thing in the church, but in reality, in reality, Jesus does not know them. Now, some of them, some people might even be miracle workers, might be preachers, might be doing great things for the kingdom of God, but their names are not written in the book of life because they have no portion. If you look at this, I want to go to Matthew 7 from verse 21. Matthew 7 from verse 21. And... I want to read this portion to you. It will amaze you because it's something that I have been thinking about for a while. Praise God. From verse 21, Matthew 7, from verse 21. Now, this is what Jesus said. He said, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Did you understand that? Many will say to me in that day, now I want you to follow what follow my, my, my reasoning. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not pre prophesied in thy name? So it means you can prophesy in the name of Jesus. And have no portion with him. Now, he said, have we not prophesied in the name? And in the name, cast out devils. Am I making point? Am I, am I making some sense here? And in the name, done wondrous works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Now, it means that they had no portion in the kingdom of God. They had no portion in Christ. That was why Christ said, depart from me. I never knew you in the first place. But the question is, how can a man be called a worker of iniquity or be denied by Jesus when such one believed in God and performed miracles in his name? It means that there is a fundamental fact that we are missing in our analysis. And I want to go on deep and dig into this mystery here today. So just do me a favor, share, invite your friends. This is a message you don't want to miss. Now, 
It means, if you look at that Matthew 7 from 21, it means that one could prophesy in the name of Jesus and be accurate, and yet Jesus doesn't know you. Yet, your name is not in the book of life. Yet, you have no portion with him. It is possible for you to cast out devil, demons, in the name of Jesus. Yet, Jesus does not know you. Or your name is not in the book of life. It is possible to do wonderful works. To do wonderful works. Feed the orphans. Feed the, 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 the less privileged. Uh, 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 do lots of charity work. And do wondrous works. Or even mysterious works for the Lord. And yet not be known in heaven. It is frightening. You see, when the Holy Ghost began to show me this, I became frightened. And then I began to ask myself questions. And such questions I began to ask myself is, how do I know the best route to have my portion in Jesus Christ? I want to shock somebody. I think after today, you need to go and reassess your Christian life. Now, the mystery of your portion in Christ, to know whether you have a portion or you do not have a portion, is hidden in the book of Acts, chapter 13 to 21. I want to read it. Let me read this for you. and You'll be amazed. Book of Acts 8. Aha. Acts 8 from verse 13. Praise the Lord. 8 from verse 13. And Simon himself, Simon was a sorcerer who became a Christian. The Bible says, And Simon himself believed also. <laughs> A, you can believe in Jesus and yet not known by Jesus. I will explain for you. Or to you. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered and wondered, beholding the miraculous signs which was done. Now, it points out three things. Please, look, after today, and you do not go to cross-check your life, to check if you're still in the faith then you're the most to be pitied. Now, look at this. Simon believed in verse 13. Number one, Simon believed. Number two, Simon was baptized. Number three, Simon became a member of the church. But something amazing happened in verse 17, 18, 19, and 20. And 21. I want to read it to you. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomever I lay my hands I may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, point here that man had pride. And was hungry for power. Question. Why are you following Jesus? Why are you in church? Are you in church for your own personal gain? Are you in church because of what you are going to get from God? Are you in church because of power? Are you fasting and praying for power so that you can go and demonstrate or are you fasting and praying for power so that the kingdom of God will be advanced? Now, God judges you by the purpose in your heart. You can be in the church, you can believe, you can be baptized, you can be a pastor, a worker. If your heart is not right, Jesus will not know you. Your, your name will not be written in his book of life. The, the heart of this man was full of pride. He was power hungry. He wanted power so that he could exhibit himself. 
That was why he gave them money. He wanted God's favor with money. He wanted to buy God's blessing with money. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. He said, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Are you in the church? Is as you are giving the pastor money so that you be promoted? You're in the church. You are giving money so that you be ordained. You are buying gifts so that you be ordained. The, you are not giving money to the church because you love the Lord. No. You are giving money to the church so that you will be promoted. You will be recognized. You are giving money to the church so that you will be called a good name. Or you are believing that by giving the money, anointing will come upon you. And, and you want power. You are looking for power in the church not to advance the kingdom of God but to build a monument among your, around yourself as a great man of God. If it is all about yourself, you have no portion in it. Let me show you. In verse 21, in fact, in verse 20, please, everybody need to write out this. Please, can somebody write out this? Praise the Lord. Can somebody write out this? In verse 21, in verse 20, sorry, but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou thought, has thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. But look at the bombshell. The bombshell is in verse, 20, verse 21. He says, thou hast, not, he said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Oh my God. Thou hast neither lot, part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. There are lots of people who are in church today. God is saying to you, you have no part or lot in the blessings of the church. You have no part or lot in the things of God. Your name is not recognized in heaven. Why? Because your heart is not right. Your purpose of coming to God in the first place was not right. You have not come to God because you love him. You've not come to God to serve him. You've not come to God to sacrifice for him. You've not come to God to suffer for him. Rather, you have come to God to use God. Your heart is wrong. You have no portion in this. It's either you change or repent. Because you have no portion in this. Your purpose of coming to God is because you're looking for power. Your purpose of coming to God is because you're looking for money. Your purpose of coming to God is because you're looking for a husband. Your purpose of coming to God is because you're looking for a wife. You have come to God because there is something that you're looking for. And you have stayed in God because you believe that you can get that thing for yourself. So, when you receive those things and continue to receive them, you continue to hang around. Our portion in God is measured by our heart. When you give to God, you give to God out of love for Him. You worship God, you worship Him out of love for Him. You suffer for, for the things of the kingdom out of love for the kingdom. You don't come to God because you are seeking something like power. You don't come to God because you want to become a pastor. <laughs> you don't come to God because you want to become a great man. No. You come to God because you love him. You come to God because he has saved your soul. You come to God because your life is in his hands. You come to God because he has saved you. you you're ready to suffer for him. You're ready to do what he tells you. Not you telling God what he should do. And that was why Paul, I mean Peter said, he said, there has neither part nor lot in this matter. And that agrees to what Jesus showed us. You know, what Jesus showed us that I quoted earlier in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, when Jesus said to them, you know, he said, I do not really, you know, I know you not. I know you not. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Who are those people? They perform miracles in his name. Let me, let me read it again. 21 to 23. Please, I need to go back to Matthew. Verse 20. Uh, 21 to 
21, 22, and even 23, he says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What matters is, are you obedient to the will of God? Are you obedient to the plans of God? It is not what you have done for God. See, let me tell you, what you have done for God is irrelevant. What is relevant is, with what heart did you do, did you do it? Were you obedient? Were you obedient? That's all what God is looking for. So don't say, I'm a member of the church. I have been baptized. I have believed in Jesus. I answered an altar call. Therefore, I know I, I'm, say, I'm, I'm going to heaven. No, that is not the guarantee. Because the Bible says, the guarantee says here, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now look at verse, verse 22. He said, Many shall say to me, Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have, have we not prophesied in thy name? Please, prophecy, we must not despise prophesying, no. We must not despise prophesying. Do I do, 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 I mean, do you understand me? Yes, we must prophesy, but you, you prophesying does not mean you have a portion with God. If you prophesy and you're living in disobedience to the word of God, you're living in sin, you can never, you can never have a portion in the kingdom of God. Then the other one says, and in thy name has cast out devils. If you like, cast out all the devil you like. If you like, do all the deliverance you like. If you're living in sin, you have no portion in the kingdom of God. If you like, do all the wondrous works. What is my conclusion today? My conclusion is that I should ask you a question. Is there a portion for you? Does God know you? Is your name written in the book of life? Don't go arguing, oh, I belong to a church. I, I, I belong to a church. I'm a deacon. I am that. That is not what God is asking of you. All God is asking of you is that your heart must be right. That you must come to serve God. You must come to follow him with your heart. And you must love him with all your heart. And you must put him first. Where you put God second, it's you're risking your portion in the things of God. Is there a portion in heaven for you? Is there a portion? Or are you among those that deceive themselves and have what I call self-confidence? Who claim and said, well, I've been baptized. Baptism does not give you a portion in heaven. In fact, even just believing does not give you a portion if you do not believe with your heart. The Bible says you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth. Many believe, so many people believe, but they don't believe with their heart. They do not believe for the, wrong, for the right purpose. They believe for the wrong purpose, like Simon, who believed, yet he was seeking for power. He was seeking for power was willing to pay money for power. Have you joined the church because you want to grow in that church and become a pastor? Is that what is in your heart? And you're doing, working very hard, doing everything very hard because you have a goal. Is that the goal of Jesus? What is in your heart? Is your heart personal or is it for the kingdom? If your heart is, is selfish, you will have no portion. There will be no portion for you. And I pray that you will look at this and you will reconsider your ways and reconsider your life. In Jesus' name. 
If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, today I want to ask of you to accept him. If you have believed in him before the wrong purpose, you still have the chance to change. Because the moment your purpose is fulfilled, you have no need for Jesus anymore. Have you come to Jesus just because you're looking for a husband? Have you come to Jesus because you're looking for a wife? Have you come to Jesus because Satan is chasing you? Have you come to Jesus because you want to use him? Then your purpose is wrong. Even if this was your purpose of coming, you can still change it and turn it around and be obedient to him and love him. Have you given so much to the body of Christ? Have you given so much money? If you've given so much money with the wrong purpose, it's a wasted man, it's a lost man, you've lost it anyway. They've spent it, it's gone. You must give with the love for the Lord. You must give it because you're giving to God. You're not giving because you're giving to man. If you want your blessing, your church, you're blessing your pastor, give it as giving to the Lord. Don't, don't give it because you need something in return. Okay? In Jesus' name. So please, if you want to give your life to Jesus here, or you want to restitute your ways, or you want to change your ways, like I said, that this is a season of restitution. Every man of God is searching their hearts. You know, I don't even see the big men of God. They are all searching. This is when the last days, everybody is searching their hearts. I search my heart every day. I want to be sure that my purpose is right. I want to be sure that my heart is right. I want to be sure I'm obedient to the word of God every day to make sure that I inherit my portion in Jesus' name. You want to give your life to Jesus? I have a few minutes. I want you to say this after me. Or you want to you want to restitute, you want to uh, come back to Jesus with the right purpose. Would you want to say after me, say, Father, I come in the name of your son Jesus Christ this today. Wash me from my sins, forgive me. I confess that Jesus died on the cross for me, that I may have life. I come to you, Jesus, with the pureness of heart. Touch me to love you. That I'll follow you for real and not for any selfish purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By saying this, you have Jesus has accepted you. He said, or he said it in the scripture. He whosoever confesses his sins. He's faithful and just to forgive. God is faithful. He's just. He's going to. He has forgiven this. Whatever sin you've carried is forgiven them all. You're a new creature. You're a new man. Your name is written in the book of life. But just make sure your heart continues to be right. In Jesus' name we pray.